So what do you call yourself? Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Roll. They okay. keep you busy enough? Yes, we, we coming. I'm coming to you now. How you doing? Good, because you know there ain't no fun talking about you if you ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> Just need a background. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Why good. Uh oh, hold on. There you go. Right. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I don't have any real complaints. If I complained, I sound ungrateful. You know. Uh, and God is too good for that. That part, that <laughs> part. But I, I sure am grateful that you decided to take time out of your schedule to join me today in the hot seat and on the tan line. There are no tears in the radio. Did they warn you about that? Yes, they did. So I, I will keep my tears to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have, no, no, I have no tears that re require tissue. That, so. that part. <laughs> and, you know, I have a lot of questions that need a lot of answers. So I needed to talk to the man himself. And they say, sure, bet we can make it happen. Our community first. You are a mastermind and a visionaire. I mean, and that goes beyond anyone else's imagination. Um, here it is. We're here today on behalf of a great cause. But, you know, with the level of transparency that you have been willing to give the world, you know the answers to a lot of the questions and you're bringing a lot of resources together. Tell me a little bit about Michael Henry O. Harris, the man. Well, I'm a man that's been through a, quite a journey. And, and I just think that it wouldn't be unfair to the world for me not to share that journey in a way that is digestible to the people who need to hear it. And what I mean by that is that sometimes you, you go through things in your life and if, you, if you're able to share it in a way that, that people who are about to make the same mistakes that you made in your life can hear it and prevent them from going through what I went through, it's part of my journey. It's part of my destiny, if you will. Right. And so every chance and opportunity I get to share things with young people, especially so that they don't make those same mistakes, I do. And uh, I've been blessed to be in different situations and I have different opportunities where and, and a platform to be able to to be able to share those 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 wise lessons that I've been blessed with. And so the community first came about. It's a nonprofit organization that's about policies. Because, yeah. you know, especially during these times where we got this election year and you got a lot of people going back and forth, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but it's not a lot of not bold policies being put forward. And I just felt like, look, you know, I, I'm in the entertainment business, I do music, I do films. But why don't I use my voice for something else? Why don't I get out there and talk to the real people and ask them what do they need instead of people always trying to tell them what they need? Right. And so that so that we can forge together and, and and lock in some policies that can make some real, real meaningful uh differences in their lives. What do, what do they really need, you know, like in terms of education and their children's schools and, and school choice and also uh, jobs and uh, meaningful jobs that, yeah. that that bring in real wages and career opportunities. How can we how can we pinpoint those things and make people focus on the real issues instead of just get caught up in optics and in the fanfare opposed to you know, real meaningful change? I love that when you allude to the fact of the smoke and mirrors everybody is so desensitized to where we don't know what the truth really looks like anymore because it's just a hashtag and a retweet. If you've seen it, surely that's got to be the platform. That's got to be the truth. That's the new gospel, right? Uh, um, but just hearing you speak on this alone, it, it shows that you're a deep thinker and you know how the game should be played because if we're not strategically planning it out, someone else has already strategically planned it out for us. Definitely. And we're going to fall victim to the game, whether we play it or not. So it's a lot easier for us to go into this thing with the game plan. 
Right. And then that you know where to meet us at, the world of entertainment. Because if you could put it on some hot tracks and the eight bars and bring everybody together, yeah. surely we can then give them what they need. <laughs> right, right. I love the way I, I love the way you mix that in because it's uh it, it's an honor being here too as well. I just think that uh your voice is also uh the type of voice that should just be multiply because you get it, you know, and you know how to give it to people in a digestible manner. And that's what happens. Like you say, people get caught up and they don't, they don't know how to d discern what's real. And it's, trust me, they got people that there's professionals that making that harder and harder, but it's, it's for us to say, okay, look, I know what I need. I know what my community need. And so how can we, how can we come together and, 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 and fight for that? And, right. and and get people to focus on real issues instead of things that don't don't amount to a hill of beans, you know? <laughs> so. And, you know, I, I really want us to be able to unveil this a lot more and to meet people where they are. Um, you are a mastermind at that. And just being able to be vocal to say, I want to do more, that's compassion. That takes people out of their comfort zone and move them to help somebody else when they don't even know they need the help, but exactly. they're trying their best to resist the help, right? right. And right. if it doesn't come in the right package, it sounds different. The stench is different. I don't want it. So please just back away from me. And we're already fighting from the from the red. Mm -hmm. um, you you spent three decades on a staycation. Yes. And life looks a lot different from when you went in to the time while you were there to now. And knowing that we are still facing some of the same obstacles because we are in this mental jungle so to speak to where we won't get out of our own ways how do you use that level of understanding to the young ones who say you know voting doesn't matter because you know it doesn't count they're not listening to my voice anyway or either one of the the policies not going to work in my favor how, how do you convince them to know that their voice matters and that as life goes on they have to start navigating through that and creating different avenues Right, great question, and I don't think it's it's it's, it's I, I would be I, I would be out of pocket to tell you that I got all the answers to that. But what I do think is that my experiences uh, has shown me that when you when you explain things to people, they start to see it different. Like even behind the walls, where a lot of guys who never had the only record they ever had was a prison record, but mm -hmm. I created programs while I was there. Well, actually, I attended many programs myself to deal with my own issues, but I created programs that taught people how to be, you know, uh, financially literate, for example. Yeah. I, taught, I, taught, uh, I created programs that taught people how to code. And a lot of people used to come to my class because of my background and, and thinking they was going to get something else but they got something that they really needed, not what they thought they was going to get. You know. Now, hold on. I want you to back me up a little bit. When you say because of my background, now, were they coming in there dropping some hate? I ate, what, some boys thinking it was going to be a, a different type of deal and you really trying to enhance them with some financial literacy? Like, walk me through that. Well, you know, like a lot of people had, was aware of my background in terms of the, 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 uh, the previous life that I had led in the streets and the trade that I was in. And so in, in that environment, uh, people were attracted to that. And so I would use that to, as, as a way to get people to come to my class. And then I would just spell that image that they had uh, looked so uh, forward to being connected to. And I just told them, you know, look, if you, if you just, the things that you could do from a legit, legitimate standpoint will change your life 100%. And, and the things that you do from a criminal aspect you can go out and do all the dirt you want to, but you end up giving it all back and you hurt people in the process. So let's that's, that's, that's take the glamour and put it to the side. And then let's talk about real issues, how people get hurt and the pain that's caused when you're away from your family and you're not able to be there and be present for your children or your family. And so, and, and let's talk about ways that you could do good <laughs> You can, you can learn how to do things in a professional manner and, and be part of society and, and get that uh, picket white fence. Get that get that uh, three cars uh, three cars in the garage. Get things without looking over your shoulder. 
So I would have these real talks and, and because it was coming from me, they they would listen. And I watched people, I watched thousands of young men change their lives and go home to become productive citizens. Yeah. So your question is, is, uh, is, is one of importance. How does this new generation even begin to approach voting as a uh, a real thing, like yeah. like like I have never seen uh, things in my community change, no matter who was in the office. So it's 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 saying to them, look, you're right. I can't tell you what you believe and what you know is not true, but what I can tell you is that we can change that tra 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 the, the trajectory of our lives by standing up and understanding the power of our vote and that certain people need your vote to be able to get in these positions. And, and if they, and if we, and if we vote for them or we allow them to be in that position, then they should know that their job is to serve us. And we have to, and we have to hold their feet to the fire. That part. So I think that in the opposite, it, it's one of those times where you have to say, I have to, I have to try and make a difference. Even though in the past there has been no results, we mm -hmm. have to fight for those results. Because if we continue to sit in this box of just watching other people di dictate our lives, we will continue to perpetuate the same nothingness. I just think it's time to have those conversations. It is. Up and down the ballot. Yeah, yeah, on all aspects. Because, you know, sometimes we're so angry saying that our vote doesn't matter and we're angry about the wrong issue with the wrong person. And you we, know, <laughs> like, right, right, right. We're going to get mad uh, about, a, about a red light and we don't even understand who we're supposed to talk to about that. But we're exactly. mad about I ain't voting for nobody because right. this light don't have a bulb in it. Well, right. there is someone within that that we should contact, but do we know who? Are we even voting for people based right. on their platforms as of who they are and the work? that they've already done. You know, yes. I'm big on this. Show me what you did with yours before I let you touch mine. And right. you gotta be like that. Especially it. when these people say they want the job to work for us, right. to work with us, because we can't expect them to be miracle workers with this wonderful wand. Right. We have people such as yourself that's going to go above and beyond to pay it forward. And God knows you don't have that to do, you mm -hmm. know? But here it is, you do, and we're grateful for that. But those efforts, they, they fall void if people don't take advantage right. of saying I need to be connected to him so we can push this initiative forward together right. not to continuously suck from him but to say how can we do this together and by educating us through entertainment I like to call it edutainment yeah. you know you're going to yeah. get us there tell me about these events that you put on because you got to do one in Louisiana did they tell you that yet yeah, I got the memo I got huh? the memo I got the memo, and, right, no. and, and I don't want to play with you. Know, I'm originally from Louisiana. I mean, I, I spent all my summers there, so okay. I definitely, I definitely got to come home. Yes, you do. And, and so, yes, uh, we, uh, we, we had a, a standing room only uh, uh, event in Philadelphia, and they really, uh, they really came out, and I really got this, got the sense of what brotherly love is. You know, the city of brotherly love. They really came out and they showed out. And also we put up into the Motor City. And uh in, in the Philadelphia, we actually had a state property, a group that hadn't performed together collectively uh, in 20 years. So just, you know, community first, just being a part of that. And we had, you know, we you know we had Rick Ross, we had Jada Kiss, we had the Locks, uh, you know, we had Trick Trick. We had a lot of the local artists and some of the uh, national artists all working together and and just uh just being all about the community. And so uh, Detroit was also another event. And uh, we had an opportunity to bring Rick Ross and Trick Trick uh, on stage together. And these guys had a big dispute 10 years ago and they were able to throw that dispute away uh, and, 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 uh, and kick it up to the uh, community first. Like, it's like, it's time for us to stop fighting with each other and figure out better ways to work with each other and respect each other. We all want community. So. Community work is organic. Uh, community first is organically doing the work, you know. So I'm I'm really excited about what's going to happen in Atlanta and of course Louisiana. That part, you know. And look, I kind of caught a chill when you said Philadelphia. I was like, wait a minute, too soon. That's still a sore spot because 
Philly did not show that brotherly love when they came out here to New Orleans against our Saints. So I don't know if they know about this brotherly love or not. I'm still a little upset. <laughs> yeah. But for you, Commissioner yeah. First, I'm going to chunk it up and say there's always next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so that that that's what it's about. You know, we we talking about access agenda, the old plan, where we want to bring more access to communities. And and also the redemption uh, agenda, you know, how yeah. how to help people that's incarcerated. Unfortunately, too many Americans, Black Americans and Brown Americans are incarcerated. And uh, and when you have a captive audience, it's like, uh, and I don't, I don't like to use that phrase, but that's what you are when you're in those situations. Mm -hmm. What kind of resources can they get while they're incarcerated so that when they come home, they can be productive citizens? Right. And, and what type of embrace does a community and business and the business world uh, embrace when they come home? Like like those opportunities. Like it's one thing to learn some, and then to be able to apply it when you come home. So that's the redemption uh, aspect of the agenda. But the access, you know, to, to like I say, better jobs, better schools, uh, uh, in our community as well as outside our community. We should have uh, we should have opportunities, and we should have options, and. Uh, it's just too many real issues to deal with. And, to, and right now, nobody's focusing on it. And that I, part. I just want, I want other people to join in on what I'm doing. And, uh, and this is not about me. It's not a dictatorship. This is, this is a community effort. Whatever anybody can bring that can help uplift and elevate our community, we open to it. This is a yeah. family thing, you know? So. Absolutely. And I want you to think of this as an extension of your office. We got a lot of work to do. You can't just haul off and leave me like <laughs> we are stuck together, whether you know it or like it. We are stuck together it. at this point. Oh. You know, just the fact that you even mentioned how those who may have had a beef with each other a decade ago and that still trickled, whether it was active on site or just yeah. in the back of their minds and everybody else's minds. But to know the power of influence that you have and you chose to use that for good. Because yeah. now in the headlines, it's no secret that everybody's seeing some that are at their highest peak using yeah. their influence for bad. And when it crumbles, it's bad. When right. it's used incorrectly, it does so much hurt and there is nowhere to turn, you know? And I'm glad you brought it up. And just like right now, there's a lot of negative stuff in the media about certain aspects of certain people's lives. And it's hard to, 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 to get community first the same type of publicity, and I thank you for having us on. People like to chase negativity opposed to positivity, and we got to work on that. Right. We're, we're talking about changes that can help you. This this getting drowned in other people's misery doesn't really help us. It just it just it just highlights how people can get off track. And I'm right. not saying that's not something that should be talked about, but it shouldn't dominate. It shouldn't dominate when you got people out here on the boots on the ground trying to get people woke about what we need to be about yeah. in this time, in this, in this moment that, that really will have a dramatic effect on what happens to our lives. Yeah. And you know, it's one of the things that I really enjoy most about this. I've been doing broadcasting for 27 years and this podcast allows us to really have those conversations, to highlight those who are making headline news for all of the right reasons, because everything else is going to find its way to you. So Definitely. I want to be able to bring you what you need in the midst of the entertainment. But if we don't get what we need, we're going to continuously bleed. We're going to hurt. We're going to hurt ourselves. We're going to hurt each other. And then it's just one big mess, right? Yeah, so I, 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 just, I just want to congratulate you for those 27 years. Thank you. Your, your voice matters. And I thank just, you so much. I just really want to thank you for having me on. And, uh, I appreciate that more than you know. Yeah. And you know, just seeing that you have done so much and you're still doing a lot. I, I was going through it. I was like, because eh, 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 we'd be here all day reading titles, but I'm going to give a couple of them real quick, you know, outside yeah. of our community first, which is coming to Louisiana soon, founder yeah. of Godfather Entertainment. And yeah. I mean, you have made some major ways with that. GF Music, Death Row Records. I mean, would I dare be all beat if I said what's next? Outside of signing me as your gospel artist. I'm listening. <laughs> outside of that, what okay. else is next for you? you get, lock it in. I'm here. Done deal. I'm Outside I'm here. of that, what's next, boss? <laughs> well, no, we we, uh, we got a lot of a lot of lot of, like even with Death Row uh, and Godfather, we uh, 
we actually went into death row pictures. So we're going to be doing a lot of films and uh, we're going to take, the, you know, we're going to connect with the new generation and uh, just going on another vibration of music. So I'm excited about it. I don't want to talk too much about it because, you know, I wanted to, I want people to feel it, you know, when it, when it rolls out, you know, the yeah. way it was uh, meant to be felt. And yeah. so I don't want to step on the headlines, but uh, we had a lot of stuff coming. And our Godfathers also does an annual um, uh, a global uh, affair uh, with the uh, Grammys every year to highlight uh, uh, Afrobeat artists and, and artists from around the world. So we're excited about that. You know, we just want to keep, you know, that, that good vibration, that good music, uh, you yeah. know, coming into our systems. So absolutely Everybody. absolutely and utilizing those platforms in the most positive way as possible because you are a beacon of light in what many people may deem as a dark time so yeah. don't ever underestimate the power of your presence and knowing that you're using it the way that you are you just keep showing up just keep showing up and they can't stop you like like well when people like yourself open the door for me to just step in for a little bit i'm just I'm just ecstatic, you know, and uh, excited. And and that's where my energy comes from. When people, when I know that I'm not here by myself, when I have people like yourself and others who are, are willing and able to to share their platforms so people can hear the real instead of the madness. Absolutely. And for others who want to join the movement, they want to learn more about our community first. How can they be a part of it from different cities, churches, schools, block to block? How do we sign up? Where, where do we go? Well, we, they can sign up at uh, communityfirstaction.org and also uh, at Community First Action and uh, find out more about us and uh, just tap in. And trust me, we're going to tap back. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I know you've got more work to do, so I'm going to let you chase the sun or let the sun chase you. But either yeah. way, get after it. I yeah. love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I love you too and God bless you and yours thank you thank Appreciate you so much <laughs>